This might be familiar. You're lost. The satnav is screeching at you to make a U-turn as soon as possible. He won't stop and ask for directions, and the petrol gauge is nearly on empty. Or how about this? You stagger to the mirror in the morning and wonder who let the old bag looking back at you into the flat and then realise, with horror, that those crow's feet and cellulite are yours. Youth fades just as you're beginning to get to grips with this thing they call life. Here's another. The boss calls you into her posh, plush, carpeted office and, in a quiet, sombre voice, so they can't hear an accounts next door, explains that she's having to let you go due to something called downsizing and she doesn't mean that the workforce have lost weight en masse. Losing things. I have a degree in it. Jobs, youth, locations. I've lost them all, sometimes all at once. I've bought self-help books to get me through the worst, although admittedly, understanding cystitis is not a great tool when you're unemployed. I've done courses in positive thinking and even tried visualising dolphins as a way of lifting the spirits. That left me slightly seasick. But all the coping strategies in the world still leave me having to face myself at this kind of time, in the wee small hours. With every knockback, I'm forced to jump through another hoop of terror. Each time I think I won't make it, but each time I seem to get to the other side, emotionally bruised and battered maybe, but still breathing just the same. I've raged, argued and bargained with God furiously throughout all the trauma and felt as if I was banging my head against a brick wall. But as I unclench my fist and let go of my attempt to control anything and everything, a different kind of satnav kicks in. The destination's unclear, but there are no toll roads to avoid, and the journey is somehow lighter and less tortuous. I still have the crow's feet, and the cellulite is still there. You can slather cream on all you want, but it doesn't work. And the job offers are thin on the ground, but the fear eases, just for a moment. Trusting that higher power takes a lot of courage, sweat and tears. But sometimes it's the only way for this broken spiritual traveller to go. Blessed are the cracked, for they let in the light.